Now this is the one you've all been waiting for, the new Porodua Ativa. So anyway, in this review, we will cover everything that's good on this car, as well as the things that are not so good. So here you'll get no bias, no nonsense, no silly gimmicks to make it sound better than it actually is. Just straight up facts and objective observations. Ready? Let's go. The Ativa range starts from 61,000 ringgit for the X, going up to 66,000 for the Ativa H, and this AV top spec model is priced at 71,000 ringgit. But at the same time, there's also a lot of people saying that you might as well buy the Arrows instead of this from Produa. It's bigger, it's got seven seats, and for the same price, why not go for the bigger car? Well, you just have to go for one single drive on the Ativa to know why this is the proper Produa flagship model now. It's a night and day difference in the way this car behaves on the road. If it was me, I would definitely go for this one. I think you should only go for the Arrows if you really, really need that extra space or the seven seats. Now on to looks, I think it's no secret that this is based on the Daihatsu Rocky or the Toyota Rays back in Japan. But at least Prodo has dressed it up to make it look like its own car. Prodo also said that it had direct involvement in the design process of the Prodo Ativa or the Daihatsu Rocky from the very beginning, more than three years ago. In a way, that makes it a lot more Malaysian than the Proton X50 because all they did with that car is just design the grille and the badge and that's about it. Overall, this has a very upright, very boxy SUV shape to it. We've also parked it next to the original Prodo SUV, the Kambara. And you can also see how Prodo has changed from making cute little cars to making much more stylish, much more aggressive looking cars to suit Malaysian tastes. I think that's definitely a good thing. A major highlight for the Ativa is in the use of very advanced headlights. The base Ativa X already has LED headlights and auto high beam. The H and the AV versions of Ativa gets automatic headlights plus an upgrade to a much more advanced adaptive driving beam system. Having said that, even with all these high-tech headlights, the one thing this car does not have is LED daytime running lights. Yep, there's no LED DRLs on this car which is very extremely lame. Another important thing is the fitment of rather premium tyre choice over here, Bridgestone Turanza T005A. Now we're sort of used to Prodoas being fitted with rather cheap and budget tyres, so this is a nice change. Having said that though, I've checked with the shop, this is going to cost you about 400 ringgit per corner to replace, so if you're used to paying about no more than 200 bucks per tyre, this is going to be a big change, it's going to be a bit painful. Now onto the interior, as you know, this looks identical to the Rocky and Rays, which is not a bad thing because the design is actually quite pleasant. This has a nice balance of being sporty, edgy and modern all at the same time. And it's a pretty good place to sit in. Overall, this is a pretty quirky looking interior. And I do like the fact that it has a lot of red highlights around it, like on the seats, the red bins over here, around the aircon vents, and even the side door handles. There's also a lot of splashes of silver around it, make it pop out a little bit more. As for build quality, surprisingly, this is not much better than the Prodo MIV. The only difference is in the use of more textured plastics here and there but predominantly this car is still full of hard plastics everywhere not a soft material to be found anywhere so in that respect the proton x50 is still miles miles better now let's take a look at the interior details one by one starting with this head unit screen over here unfortunately this is not a very good one don't get me wrong, it's nice and big, 9 inches and it's thin as well. But unfortunately that is all for sure because if you look closely, this is pretty much the same head unit you see in the MyV and the Arrows. Speaking of phones, there's also no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I think in this day and age, it's almost criminal to not have this feature on modern brand new cars. As for the audio system, the Ativa runs a six-speaker system including two tweeters but to be honest, they don't sound that good. And the one thing that I find hilarious from all these years from Produa head units is the English. So if you look at that screen, it has the proper word settings with an S. This one however, it's not settings, it's 
setting setting satu setting i think we need to call adibahno to make a video for this send it to produa or something make it viral sikit kasi viral baru dia nampak kot but of course it's not all bad the one thing on this car is that it's got a pretty decent reverse camera it's quite high res quite sharp much better than the one in the proton x50 one thing it doesn't have is a 360 degree all around view camera which the rocky and rays does have in japan but yeah this is supposed to be a budget car here in malaysia anyway i guess that is a cost factor there it also doesn't have an auto parking assist feature like in the x50 it does have it in japan with the rocky and rays but again this is slightly bigger than the myvi and you have a much higher much better view out if you can't park this car properly yeah you really shouldn't be driving moving down here the aircon controls are not the same as the ones in japan we don't get any automatic climate control over here instead we get a manual but digital controls down here there is an old school handbrake so yeah unlike more modern cars it does not have an electronic parking brake and you know what this also feels a little bit cheap especially the button over here it almost looks like it's going to fall off anytime soon moving further back there is a center armrest which is a feature that a lot of produa owners are asking for and if you get the h and the av it comes with this semi soft touch plastic as well and if you open it up there is a small compartment for you to hide certain things and it's even lined in felt for a produa that's a big thing now let's move on to the digital instrument cluster which is a very quirky jdm thing i'll show you why First of all you have four different themes to choose from and each one also has very cool intro and outro animations. You've also got a choice of three signal tones to choose from. Yeah, I don't know why this car would need it but it does have it. There's also a birthday reminder built into the instrument cluster. This is to remind you of your girlfriend or your wife, your husband's birthdays or even important dates like anniversaries and whatnot. Just, you know, just remember to only put one date in there, not 2 3 But one major fault with the steering wheel is the lack of adjustability. This only allows for tilt adjustment up or down like that. But no telescopic adjustment. There's no adjustment for reach. You can't pull it towards you or away from you. For me, because I'm short, this is not that big of a problem. I can work around it. But for much taller people, I think above 180 centimeters, you will struggle with seating position on this car. You might be forced to sit too close to the dashboard to get close enough to the steering wheel to get optimum control. But your knees might be a bit too close to the dashboard. But at least the seats have now been vastly improved compared to older Produa models. They are now much bigger and they fit much bigger and taller drivers as well. You no longer feel like you're not being supported by a tiny front driver seat. And in this AV version, it gets fully covered in leather, black and red, plus there's this suede-like materials on the side. Now in the back, I do have to apologize for saying that Ateva does not come with the tarik hooks. It does in fact with two but it's hidden in the front headrest not the regular flip down types in the older models now i don't think this is going to be as useful as the regular traditional hooks back here because it's oddly placed and you do have to squeeze down to get to the bottom of the hook yeah but still completely missing is the handbag hook which was a genuine produa invention now that's missing it's a bit of a shame i think Another unique Produa feature to go missing is the toll reader, the integrated smart tag. I guess Produa thought that RFID is going to be a thing here right now in Malaysia, but it's not yet. So yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Now on to space, it's not too bad. It's actually slightly less spacious than a Produa Myvi as we've shown you in a previous video. But that's not to say that this car is cramped. It's not. It's still fairly spacious. And even if you're significantly taller than me, I'm only 167 centimeters tall. Even if you're 180, you should be able to sit behind yourself in this car. It's not a cramped car at all. But comparative to the Myvi and even the Proton X50, this is the smallest one of the three. Headroom is not a problem because this is a tall SUV anyway. 
plus you can recline the rear backrest by a little bit what should have been better are the seats themselves because this is extremely flat very unsupportive and the base itself is very very short now you can't really see it here because i've got short legs but if you have a taller person sitting in the back this will be way too short there'll be a big gap between the back of their ties this over long journeys is going to be very tiring very quickly Plus, there's also no rear aircon vents over here. So if you're sitting in the back here for two, three hours on end, I'm gonna get very cranky. On the plus side, you do get a pair of USB chargers down there, adjustable rear headrest, plus a pair of Isofix anchors on the left and right seat. One thing you are sure to notice is how light the rear doors feel. They are very light, very flimsy, and they sound very tinny as well, very cheap. Another thing that doesn't look so good is just how soft the rear suspension looks. You can just push it down by your bare hands. The boot has two levels. On the upper level, you get 303 litres. On the lower level, 369 litres. That's more than the Myvis 277 and the X50's 330 litres. Under the floor is a full-size spare tire with the exact same tyre and wheel combo as those used on the outside. That is a big, big plus. And of course, the rear seats can be folded but not quite flat. But then again, it should be big enough for most usage. Now let's start with the most important thing in my books, the engine. Underneath the bonnet is a 1 litre, 3 cylinder, turbocharged engine. And the power outputs tell you the whole story really. Compared to the Asia and Beza 1 litre, this here has 98 PS and 140 Newton meters of torque. That is 30 PS and 50 Newton meters of torque more. So by doing this, Produa and Daihatsu is now achieving the power levels of a 1.5 liter NA engine with a much smaller, much cheaper 1 liter 3 cylinder engine. If we talk about the 0 to 100 times, we've clocked the MyV at about 11.5 seconds the last time we drove it, and this one we clocked it at about 12.1 seconds. So it's a little bit slower. I think in gear acceleration, this blows the MyV out of the water, really. Like you're doing 60, you're doing 80, and you step your right foot, and the car just pulls, it just goes. And the rate of acceleration is much, much better than what you can get in the MyV. There's also a small power button on the steering wheel. You press that, the engine and transmission primes itself to offer more power as soon as you need it. And yeah, as far as a power button, as a boost button works, this is pretty good. It's pretty effective. Now, if you're worried that this being a three-cylinder engine, it might not sound as refined as a four-cylinder, well, Yeah, you're pretty accurate there. Now that right there is a rather characteristic, traditional signature of a three-cylinder engine. I call it the three-cylinder wine. And you can call it whatever you want. It sounds like a washing machine, sounds like a hair dryer. Sounds a bit mean, but that's exactly how it sounds. It's very high pitch, it's very loud. And it's not the thing that you would get on any modern four-cylinder engines. Well, you won't really get it on uh, more advanced three-cylinder engines even. I mean, the Nissan Almera has a bit of that sound, but it's a much more muted way. It's a lot quieter compared to this. Plus the X50, also three cylinders, you don't get this sound at all. It's a lot more hushed in that one. Now on to refinement and the vibrations from this three pot is not bad, it's actually quite good. When you drive along, you're in a traffic jam, it doesn't vibrate as much. But when you are completely stopped, or idling, say in a traffic jam, completely stopped, you start feeling a little bit of that vibration creeping in through the seats, through the floor, through the pedals, and that can be a little bit annoying. So in that sense, yeah, refinement, it's a massive improvement over previous three-cylinder Produa's, but it's not quite to the level of four-cylinder engines. I think if you are stuck in a jam day in, day out, the MyV would feel a lot more refined than this. But on the plus side, there's the fuel economy. Now, over a couple of hundred kilometers with this car, with very normal driving through traffic jams, a bit of highway drives, I have 
maintain an average of about 14 kilometers per liter which I think is pretty decent it's a little bit less compared to a Myvi where I've done about 15 to 16 kilometers per liter but at the same time it's slightly better than my own Proton X50 that one I would struggle to do 12 kilometers per liter so in that sense as far as SUVs go it is pretty good Another cost concern that a lot of people have with turbocharged engines is the maintenance cost. Believe it or not, it would cost virtually the same to maintain an Ativa as compared to maintaining a Purodua Myvi. Both cars will cost you just under 3,200 ringgit. That's in terms of servicing, oil changes, fluid changes, spark plugs, and whatnot. Now on to the transmission, which is the much publicized D CVT. D standing for dual mode CVT. If you've only ever driven Proton CVTs and you're afraid of it, yeah, don't worry about it. This is nothing like that. So with DCVT, as soon as you go beyond the first initial take-up acceleration, there is now a split between the power outputs through a regular drive belt and a gear drive as well. So this car cruises 110 at about 2,400 RPM, and that is a little bit lower than a regular Myvi 1.5. That would do about 2008, 2009 at 110. But the best part about this transmission is that it is seamless. You don't feel whether it's running on the belt drive or the split gear drive or the gear drive alone. It just feels like a normal, very competent gearbox. And no way does it feel slow to respond. It just works. Now we move on to the driving experience as a whole. I think this car, the engine and transmission, is a major achievement for Perodua. This turbocharged engine is a revelation for Perodua. No longer does it feel like it's gutless at lower speed, no longer does it feel like you cannot accelerate, you can't overtake as easily as you'd want it to be. This is a game changer, true game changer for Perodua. Now on to the ride and handling of this car. The steering is a big jump in terms of refinement compared to the old Perodua's. This doesn't feel over assisted, it feels quite nice. There's a nice heavy weight to it through the corners. There's not much feel of course because this is still an EPS, but you now get a fair bit of confidence to push through the corners. Or at least you don't feel scared through the corners like you do get in the smaller, lighter Perodua's. It's also packed together with a decent ride and handling package. The suspension here is properly tuned for Malaysian roads. The damping here is excellent. It's much nicer than the slightly kosong, slightly brittle feeling of a Myvi. This has a much more sophisticated ride quality. Now, if you were to compare this car against bigger, more expensive rivals like the Proton X50 and the Hondas and the Toyotas, this is still a few levels below all that. But within Produa's own range, this is now a proper flagship model for that brand. Now let's talk about all the safety assists available on this car. This has electronic stability control, six airbags as standard across the range. That is to be expected in this day and age. But what's not so expected is the fitment of AEB or Autonomous Emergency Braking across the entire range of this one. And not only is AEB now standard, it's an improved version of AEB where it now works at up to 120 kilometers per hour and it can now detect motorcycles and bicycles as well. Malaysian roads being the way they are, that's an important improvement. On top of AEB, this car also has lane departure warning and prevention as standard across the range and it works quite well. If you are veering off your lane without indicating like now, the car will give you a buzz as well as a slight tug on the steering wheel to push you back into your own lane. At the very least, this will make you want to use your indicators more as you drive and that can only be a good thing. Stepping up into the top spec AV version that we have here, you also get adaptive cruise control, active lane keep assist system, blind spot monitor as well as a rear cross traffic alert. Adaptive cruise control is a highlight feature for this car. Now having said that though, the adaptive cruise control doesn't really work all that well. I mean it works as advertised, it will measure the distance to the car in front, but it does so in a rather crude manner. The newer systems have been refined in this sense where all the inputs on through the steering wheel, through the pedals, 
are done in a smooth way like you're an experienced driver this however I think is based on a slightly older ACC system everything is a bit abrupt everything is not quite as smooth so yeah I don't think I can drive all that long with this system it also has active lane keep assist where it's supposed to keep you in the middle of the lane as you drive along but its scope of use is very very limited it only adjusts the steering wheel at a slight degree a very very small angles one two degrees three degrees at most and beyond that it will ask you to take control back from the car compared to similar technologies from Hondas and Protons this is still a very rudimentary version of the technology but at least you know you have it in a much cheaper car than before this is still after all a 70,000 ringgit kind of car one thing it loses out on compared to the Proton is low speed follow because this ACC only works from between 30 km per hour to 125 km per hour so if you go faster than that it will not work obviously we shouldn't be doing that anyway because this is still a small compact city SUV but as for low speed follow this only works above 30 kilometers per hour so it will not help you in traffic jam situations so that's our review of the Produa Ativa SUV easily put this is the best Produa yet this is easily the best driving best handling most comfortable most refined Produa ever so if you're coming from an existing Produa or even an older Japanese car do take a good look at this because this offers a lot for the money it's unbeatable in terms of value the amount of car amount of tech you get for 70,000 ringgit nothing else comes even close to what this car offers but at the same time this car does come with a fair few of flaws and it's hard to avoid comparisons to the bigger Proton X50 while well, this may be by far the best Produa yet compared to the Proton X50 this falls short a little bit which I suppose it's fair because this is still 30,000 ringgit cheaper than the Proton X50 if you ask me, I think if you can afford the full flagship X50, you should go ahead and with that. But if you're looking at the lower variants of the X50, you really should consider looking at this instead. Because this really does offer a lot of car, a lot of tech for a lot less cash. So there you go, the Produa Ativa SUV. What do you think about it? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? And what do you think of my review of it? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.